I'm Marge Kilkelly. And I'm Mary Kate Rennie. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Nourishing Maine. we're going to do today? We're going to make some refrigerator pickles. We're actually going to do our riff on refrigerator pickles. There are so many different ways to make them. They're so easy and they're the perfect snack for hot days in fall like this one. And they're also perfect when it's a hot day and you don't want to heat your kitchen up with a boiling water bath. That's for sure. Yeah. And you've got all the product that is all the product that's coming forward um, and it is the perfect quick, easy, and delicious refrigerator pickle. Especially when you've got all these pickles from the garden and you don't want them to go too quickly. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna follow a recipe off of Marjorie Standish's book titled The Main Way. Um, but like all cooks, or like cooks like Marge and I, who read cookbooks or have a stack of them on our nightstand, should I say, um, you know, you can, you can make adjustments to recipes most often and we're gonna do that today. That's why I'm not a baker. Me too. Yeah, baking is like a science <laughs> and cooking is an art. And I'm all about the cooking. I want to taste it, I want to make it the way I want to make it, and I want to experiment. And the reward. And the, the reward. reward, of yes. course. And simple recipes. There's only five or six in this one. You got cukes, onions, vinegar, sugar, salt, and spices. So you were telling me about cucumbers. And, I mean, I knew they had two ends, but that's all I knew. So, there's, so cucumbers have a, have a flower end and a stem end. Usually the flower end is a little bit more yellow. Um, it's the older end, if you will. And you want to trim off, oh, 18th or uh, just a small bit of that end, the flower end, off before you um, and, and compost them because it, it tends to make the pickles a little soggier. So if you get rid of that piece of the pickle before you get started on the chopping, um, it's a good way to keep them, keep them nice and crunchy. A good tip. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. Let's start cutting. All right. How, how thick should we make these? I'm going, because the salt in the recipe tends to shrink up the, the um, cells in the cucumbers, I go quarter inch. Okay. But it's not an exact science. We all have our favorite, our favorite thickness, but you can't go wrong with a quarter inch. So I don't need a ruler? Not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be complicated. That would make it more like it would. baking. It would. <laughs> That's right. We don't want to do that. So this can go fast. We also noticed that some recipes call for quite a few cucumbers, which makes, obviously, a bigger batch. Um, but, you know, cucumber pickles um, last for two weeks at the most in the fridge. They're not canned or, or um, pressurized at all. Um, so un unless you want to give them away as gifts or you have a reason to have a whole lot of refrigerator pickles, you can adjust the recipe um, by half, a quarter, even a couple of jars if you want to. I love bread and butter pickles. They're sweet, right? Yeah, are, are they're very sweet. So I don't know the difference between all the different pickles. I think we saw in Marjorie's book icicle pickles and yeah. refrigerator pickles, bread and butter. What's another one? Oh, I mean, there's, well, there's dill pickles. I, I put it in the wrong place. I know, that's, um, that's going to happen. Dill pickles? Dill's I mean, are obviously. My, are my fave. Oh, really? But I will, I mean, clearly, I love, I love sweet pickles for summertime particularly. Yeah. You know, all those barbecue applications, if you will. Well, and don't forget tartar sauce. I know. I, Yum. Tartar sauce, that's, you know, you've got to drain some of the brine, but you chop up these beautifully pickled cucumbers, and man, you've got your homemade tartar sauce, your homemade relish, your homemade pickles. One more a piece. All right. I gave you one. Oh, you're on it. So in this recipe, what we're calling for are 10 medium cucumbers. <laughs> now, medium is an interesting question because now we have English cucumbers, which are like a yard long, um, and we have slicing cucumbers, and we have pickling cucumbers. And so our thought was, you know, these are pretty much medium cucumbers. 
um, but it will, um, it will make a difference depending on the kind of cucumber you're using. And the recipe is very forgiving. You know, I mean, yeah. you're always going to have either extra cukes or extra, extra brine. So um, just make a good guess and you'll, you'll be fine. So the other thing we've called for in this recipe are three onions. Now that's a lot of onion I to some people. I think you threw in an extra one, Marge. I did, I did, because I love the onions in bread and butter pickles. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I've even thought about making this recipe with just onions. Um, <laughs> that's called pickled onions. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> we'll do that next I wonder time. if they call them bread and butter pickled onions. I don't know. I don't either. We can Maybe we up, could do that. We could, or we, we could make up our own. That'll be our next riff. We'll call it, yeah, there we go, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see if the onions make us cry. We will. And we I will. think that we need a bigger compost bin here. The, so all of our compost here on the farm goes to the chickens. And so while some people have really small buckets for their compost, we have a fairly large bucket for our compost, which is right over there by the vegetable sink. <laughs> which we'll bring over. Which we'll bring over. And of course, depending on the size jar you use, and we will mention this now, because we aren't canning these pickles, they're just getting popped into the refrigerator, you can use any jar you like. And we've got several examples. Um, the reason I mention it now is because the size of the, how you chop your onions depends on what jar you're gonna put it in, because there's nothing sadder than having a nice, beautiful, pickled onion option, and it, you're jamming it in and breaking its little neck if we put it in a, <laughs> if we put it in a small jar. So that's just one consideration. So, um, I mean, that's yeah. obviously a regular canning yeah. jar. And because Marge is a fan of onions, we're gonna use this jar for this, for my particular batch and have nice long onion um, slices, but you can go, you know, small or big as you'd like. You can quarter it if you want. You can. So, but if you've just got jars around the kitchen and it's a, a jar that know you particularly like maybe you want to make this recipe for a family picnic and there's a jar that you particularly like just put it in that because it's going in the refrigerator mm -hmm. and we don't need to be concerned about it having a seal which is the reason I am using for example this old ball jar um, and it's perfectly fine to use and don't even need to have a, a rubber seal on it because we're just putting and it in the fridge sweet little lock in place yeah, if you I know, want so cute I do like those jars I know. So the next step after we do the slicing, and we can always do that, um, is the brine that will be poured over to do the actual pickling magic. Brine time. Brine time somewhere. Isn't that a song? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's not five o'clock. So in our brine, um, we call for a quarter cup of pickling salt. And I have my handy dandy little measure here that I can fill to a quarter of a cup. I can see it too. I know. I, I like measuring cups where the, in, the levels are actually imprinted into it because the other ones they wash off and you go like, where is that? What it's is that supposed to be doing? It's a guess. It shouldn't be a guess. It should be a measuring cup. There we go. All One right. quarter cup. One quarter cup. Pickling you can salt. dump it in. Ooh, yay. There you go. And then we've got sugar. We've got sugar. We have three cups of sugar. There you go. Yay, so satisfying. It is. Vinegar, yes. we need two and a half cups you of got vinegar. It. And this is a two cup. There's two. I'm very left-handed, so I'm kind of proud of myself here. And a half cup. There we go. I poured some lemonade yesterday and dumped it all over the floor. And oh. I'm right-handed and was doing it right-handed. So there you go. You just never know. And there we be. That's two and a half. All right. Apple cider vinegar, 5%. percent Five percent apple cider vinegar. That's right. Real apple cider vinegar. And do we want to add these delicious spices? So Absolutely. Turmeric, one teaspoon. I love the big container. We'll never run out. It's also so easy to get into, so you're not with the you little know, oh, can. Oh, I know. <laughs> Can't really level it. This gives it that beautiful color, too. Yeah, the pickle, the pickle brine. Here. 
And then celery seed, one teaspoon of celery seed. All right. Let's pour that in here. I think the yummiest part of these pickles actually is. Are the little seeds that, get, little that you get to have in your yes. brine? Okay, celery. And mustard seed. My favorite. I have the dark mustard. I know ah. there's both. Is there a difference? I don't know. Oh. I've always used in those. In flavor, I mean, I'm just wondering. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just know if you have faith in mustard seed, you can make good pickles. I think we're there. I think we are. Sugar, salt, vinegar, spices. There so you go. this gets heated up. It does. We're going to put it on the stove on medium, and we are going to bring it just to a boil. All right. Stirring it. Okay. Well, our brine is cooked and ready. It's going to cool a little bit, and we can start packing our pickles. And we're going to layer cucumbers and onions. Lots of onions. Lots of onions in Marge's jars. Um, I love them as well. Um, but really, you can um, try to pack it tightly. You don't want to break them. They're lovely. Um, but they do tend to float after you pour the brine on them or after they've um, absorbed some of the salt and, and spices. So you can really pack it in there. And when we say pack the jars, you can pack it tight. And don't be surprised when you're finished with these pickles that they are floating. Um, you're, that's going to happen. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. Um, and it's, it's usually pretty hard to pack them tight enough for them not to do that because they're changing shape um, in the course of that process. So um, just know that they're perfectly fine and it's okay. Yes. And as you saw, we, we clipped the, the blossom end off of these um, to keep them snappy. Um, but they really do retain their crispiness because they're in the fridge. They should be in the fridge, you know, no longer than two weeks if they last that long, as Marge says. Mine never last And that long. Um, you don't really have to worry about them being too soggy because of their, you know, their short shelf life, if you will. Another thing to do is to break up those onion sections when you're putting them in there. Yes. So and take the root out. I mean, if a, a, a root oh, piece, yeah. you know, you don't want that in there. Although all parts of an onion. Although you, this is Mar <laughs> this is Marge's jar, so it's going to go in here. <laughs> uh, oh. So you can push them in there, and the brine will find its way, of course. This recipe is going to make about four pints of pickles. Um, more or less. Of, more or mentioned. less, yeah. And again, it depends on the size of your cucumbers. It depends on how much you press them down, um, how many onions you use. <laughs> but you um, inevitably, like I said, you know, if you, if you know that it's going to make a lot of pickles and you don't think you could get through them, um, you, can, you can half the recipe, you can quarter it, you can make a jar or two. Um, it's all very um, forgiving. And you can play around with it a little bit. Yeah, in the springtime you can use, you know, asparagus or um, and onions. Or you can mix up that veggies as well. So mine's pretty tight. You're, of course, you want a little bit of room at the top for the brine. So when you open the jar, you don't spill it all over the front of yourself or in the fridge. So that's a pretty well packed jar. I mean, you aren't supposed jar. to do that. You aren't supposed to be spilling unless the brine you're, Unless you're careful. Um, that's a pretty well packed pickle jar. And so we've, we're, getting we're getting there. Quite a few. I'm going to use one of the jars that you brought. Sure. One of the, one of the non-canning jars, yes. if you will. Yes, right. And that's a non-canning one, too. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. This one here. Oh, all right. It doesn't matter. I was so focused on making sure I had plenty of onions in mine. That I, I saw really you weren't noticing my I jar. wasn't watching what I, you were doing. I saw that. <laughs> and you, got, you already put it in your beautiful little jar. I did. <clears throat> I love those. I do, too. You just think about, I mean, I like to, I have a lot of antique cooking equipment. And... I like to think about how how many times it's been used. I know. And how many people used it, what other kind of products were in there, and how important it was at a time when you couldn't just run off to the grocery store, um, how important it was to be preserving food, especially in Maine. I know. We had long winters. And my favorite, one of my most favorite things is, again, reading cookbooks for sport, um, <laughs> is seeing um, annotations by, um, oh. well, for me, my mother-in-law, but um, yes. anybody, you can, when, you, when you are lucky enough to find 
an old uh, cookbook in a thrift store or what have you, and you see notations, whether it's too much salt or um, whatever. We liked this one. Oh, my, my mother-in-law's <laughs> favorite thing was really good with an underline. So that's when I went, I'm doing it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's the good stuff. Absolutely. I think I'll leave the rest for you. It looks like yeah. you're going to need them to put in there. Yeah. And you know, the other part of it is if the amount of pickle and uh, cucumber and onion that you have doesn't completely fill up the jar, that's okay too. Right. Um, I mean, it, again, it's very forgiving mm -hmm. and it is a really cool recipe in that way. Mm -hmm. And we will see how the brine ratio works out with our cubes and go from there. I shall go get the brine. All right. I've got the ladle. I'm gonna give it a good stir. You can see the turmeric on there. It's mm. so beautiful. It is. And it smells so good. And at this point, you know, of course you're welcome to add a funnel and um, do it the, <laughs> the tidier way, but I'm gonna be careful and see how we do. The wider mouths um, will help me out, I hope. That's why, that's why they make um, dishcloths. Well, you think. And yeah. aprons. And aprons, absolutely. So this is still warm, which is perfectly fine. You can smell the mustard and the celery seed has really opened up. Mm. So good. Yeah, and I just can't resist the color. Yeah. So that's that? pretty good. And when we're done pouring this in here, we will debubble and you'll see, you can really gain some some space when you get those air bubbles out of there. I love watching it sort of cascade over the cucumbers I know, too. So I you mean, see the seeds? so pretty. I know, right? And they get so well dispersed. Mm -hmm. So how do you use your refrigerator pickles? All the ways. Oh, all the ways. Well, I use the brine. I mix that with mayonnaise to make a coleslaw dressing, oh. which is just delicious and so easy. Hmm, that's a good idea. That's and a sweet coleslaw. It is a sweet coleslaw and yummy. And then, um, obviously, I, I mean, I put pickles on just about everything. Yeah, so there um, you go. So I put pickles on burgers. I chop up pickles and put them on baked potatoes. I know that's sort of strange for some people, mm -hmm. but that's how I do it. So we're filling up the last two. They're looking delicious. It is so pretty, isn't it? it smells like pickles. It smells it like smell summer. Pickles. It does, without the house all being hot. Yes. <laughs> Here, I'll tip that a little more. There okay. Go. Or we can actually, actually I can pour it. Yeah, why don't you pour it? There you go. Top that one off. Great. There. And we will debubble. Debubble? Debubbling with our chopsticks, which I find is the easiest and best tool to do this with. So we're getting the bubbles that are way down at the bottom that, mm -hmm. that the cucumbers are holding? Uh-huh. The cucumbers are the onions trapped air when you pack them, especially in this tight one, right? Um, so it'll, it'll leave a little bit more space up at the top. This one's actually probably too full. There we go. Neat. Yeah, it does smell so good. I know, it does. That's the other thing. If, if we were making these as regular preserved pickles and in a bath, we'd have to wait a couple of weeks before we could eat them, wouldn't we? Well, if we, had, if we wanted to have them shelf stable, we would use a water bath canner yep. and we would need to um, uh, preserve them appropriately um, with a, uh, an approved recipe. And they do suggest if you can uh, your cucumbers, that you wait a couple of weeks for them to get their yumminess together. Whereas with a refrigerator pickle, eh, wait overnight and you've got yourself a delicious treat. So, and it does keep the, the kitchen cooler. There. We did it. Ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> We have refrigerator pickles ready to Oof. go in the refrigerator. I always thought vinegar was vinegar. Apple cider vinegar was the usual vinegar that you used. Then there was white vinegar, distilled vinegar, and fancy other vinegars. So making a quick trip to the store a couple of years ago, we were we were getting ready to start making pickles and I picked up a bottle of vinegar. I get home and my wife shows me that it's apple 
cider flavored distilled vinegar with a 4% acidity. We needed apple cider vinegar that was apple cider vinegar at 5% acidity in order to make the pickles. According to the extension and all other authorities, that 5% stands. If you're going to make great pickles or relish, read the label and get the 5%, and it says it right under the nutrition label. And that's the Joe way. So now we get to do the really fun part. Mm -hmm. We get to taste the pickles. Can't wait. So I made pickles the other day, and I used the recipe we had. I heated the brine and put the brine um, over the pickles. What did you do? And my batch was very similar. Well, it was exactly the same recipe. However, when I realized I didn't have enough white sugar, I added one for one date sugar. Oh. So mine, as you can see, is a little browner um, in this jar. The other thing that I did differently was because the recipe, as read, said that you can just pour the brine over your cukes cold. You know, I stirred. So you the didn't cook it at all. Didn't cook it. Wow. I dissolved the sugar, kind of. <laughs> in the vinegar because the vinegar does its thing sure but I did notice that you know I do get a little bit of sugar in the bottom but I did also notice the flavor was just as delicious honestly could not tell oh. snappiness um, it wasn't too vinegary you know it was really yummy and then um, so those were the two substitutions I did I added um, you know one cup of date sugar kept the rest the same and I didn't heat up the brine on this one so let these two. Oh, oh, a third yes, version. I wanted to see, wow. you know, one of those, you know, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> um, the other thing I did was I did heat the brine, let some of it evaporate, but let the mustard seed and celery do their thing. And I let it cool. Oh. And then I poured it over. And so maybe you can tell me if you can taste the difference between any of these. I could not, which makes it even easier. And my refrigerator pickles are a game changer. <laughs> When it comes to an easy pickle on the let's table. Let's eat. All right, let's do it. They are beautiful. Oh, aren't those great? Yeah. These, look at it. These different. are the ones that I did not cook. And they're, they look almost, the salt definitely made their, made the difference. So that's that one. I got an onion. Of course you did. <laughs> and you can see if you can taste the difference in mine, if you want. Oh, yeah. I want to try. Well, you need to try mine. I do. I'll even try an onion. Don't take too many onions. <laughs> it's the color I'm after. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's all right. All right. I'm going to try yours first. And you can hear the snap with the fork. Mmm. All there. I love bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> They're so good. Maybe you just wake up your whole palate. I am amazed that the seeds actually bloomed. I mean, I just... I you would, mean in this one? In the one that mm -hmm. wasn't cooked, because it doesn't... I don't know, in my head it didn't make any sense. I know. It just makes it... It just goes to show these older recipes, just, you know, they did what they had to do, and, you know... And the they ones, knew what they were doing. And we overthink it, maybe. Yeah, probably. But... I'm going to try your other one, too. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. I don't think you can tell the difference between the date sugar and real sugar. I mean granulated sugar. They're both real. And they're both very sweet. I mean, they're sweet. both sugar. Yeah. Now, these are interesting because they didn't sort of, sh not shrivel in a mm -hmm. bad way, but they didn't This sort one of, really did. It really did, And yeah. I think it's because when you cook the brine, it does evaporate some of that vinegar. Oh. And I think, you know, this had no, this had full power vinegar, even though the taste is not off-putting. Hmm. They're all delicious. Mm -hmm. They're all delicious. So a forgiving recipe. An easy, easy recipe. Mm -hmm. We don't have to get a boiling water bath on your stove and heat up your kitchen when it's mm -hmm. really way too hot to be fall. That's right. Yeah, well, thanks, Marge. Yum. Thank fun. you. That was fun. <laughs>